Apple's quadrupling it for you. Stop sharing your passwords. And stop thinking you need to buy anything besides this CPU. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your bright host. We're going to be going over the hottest tech news you can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. <laughs> this Friday. And I'm Kyle. February 2nd, 2024. It's Groundhog's Day. Is that why you Shouts pulled that out? out? Yeah, he saw his shadow. He did? Emotional support chicken. <laughs> back in my pocket. Oh man, you're just going to squeeze that throughout the episode, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> well, Apple is not squeezed for the amount of apps that they have coming to the Vision Pro, which launches today. We may be able to pick ours up. I might have to convince an Apple employee to I'll schedule I'll smooth talk them. I think that's what we're going to have to do. My appointment's not till a few days from now. But turns out that despite the fact that Apple said last week there was only going to be 150 apps for the Vision Pro, there's now going to be 600 apps for Why'd the Vision Pro. Why did they lie? I Why does it lie? I think they weren't in the confirmation stages where like these companies were ready to ship their apps, but now mm. that they are, and this is not the amount of apps that you're going to be able to use total because that's actually a million plus because iPad apps can actually be used on the Vision Pro unless developers opted out for them to be shared to the Vision Pro. And there are a few that have done it, like Spotify and Netflix. They don't want to be on the Vision Pro. But Apple allowing you to have a ton of apps, including things like the NBA app, which looked really cool. Other streamers are on board, like HBO, as well as Peacock. You're going to be able to use those and Amazon Prime Video. Some of them might have like 3D services. Some of them might only just be watching it in a movie theater, which they, they say that you can have... You can watch it in the Red Keep with Targaryen-era adornments on HBO. You say peacock. No That's one bats an eye. But I will tell you that the app that I got the most excited for to find out is coming to the Vision Pro is Niantic's upcoming skateboarding game, the AR one. I want to try it. So it turns out that this is called Skatrix, and it's going to be made by Rodney Mullen. He's the new Tony Hawk. Okay. You can do a whole bunch of stuff in this, <laughs> but the thing that sold me on it was watching this demo trailer where it actually interacts with real life. They're at Home Depot! And oh, we got wrecked by the, the washing machine. I want to know how it works. I do too. That's, I'm so ex this just looks like tech decks, but on your face. I'm, I'm very yeah, like, excited uh, I, for it. I, I hope that it's like eye tracking and like you look in the direction that you want the little skater dude to go. And, but I don't know. I don't know either, but Meta does know that they probably want to support spatial video, so that's exactly what they announced, that spatial video will be coming to the MetaQuest mobile app, so if you have a 15 Pro or Pro Max that can record spatial video that gives you the thing that's going to allow you to get like that VR footage you want, it's going to be supported on MetaQuest. Easy VR footage. I'm mad. Why? So I have a 14. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. Where's the Apple dongle extension that lets me lightning adapter connect to a sensor that lets me take you, you crazy video? You just need a friend with one, which I think you, you have a friend with a 15 <laughs> Pro. <coughs> <coughs> friends. Well, I can tell you, you could fit a lot of friends into today's video sponsor, Silverstone, and their Alta F2 case. I'm pretty sure me as a human can fit in this thing. I'll try it. I shouldn't. <laughs> you really shouldn't. I don't know if we have a tabletop that can support that. But, you know, it is tough trying to balance out when you're building a high-end PC, whether that's the cooling or the quietness or trying to figure out what you want to do. And sometimes setting up your GPU to run cooler makes your CPU run hotter. It's a wild situation. But the Alta F2 can simultaneously take care of a fully loaded CPU and GPU. And be very quiet. It's been tested and verified by Tech Power Up and PC Magazine as being one of the lowest noise levels and one of the coolest cases out on the market. It's a superbly engineered chassis that truly lives up to the case cooling king titles that many previous Silverstone cases have garnered over the years, but now it's better than ever. We saw this first at Computex. It's got a slanted GPU setup, so that way the cooling is very efficient. It can fit Everything. all of it. All of it. <laughs> like it has obviously official specs applications, but if you're looking for a showstopper king case that you want to just blow everybody's minds when they see it, the Alta F2 can make that happen. So you can check that out at the link in the video description. Big thanks to Silverstone for sponsoring today's video. It's pretty popular for me in my heart. I'm, I'm happy with it. And it turns out YouTube Premium is very popular. YouTube came out and announced 
that they have 100 million subscribers. YouTube saying that even though this does include trials, they've had a 20 million member growth in just one year on YouTube Premium, but marking that they're very competitive with things like Spotify, which only has 237 million paying users, I believe is the official figure. Only. 226. So if YouTube Premium's at 100 million, which also includes YouTube Music, it makes them one of the largest music streamers out on the market. And you get all the benefits of all of the YouTube stuff. But makes me worried that maybe one day they'll split it off <laughs> and YouTube music will become its own thing. And then YouTube premium to get ad free YouTube is going to be it's, YouTube red again. It's the same price. <laughs> <laughs> um, is YouTube music, like, is the interface good? I, I've like, heard my, good things, yeah. My issue with it is, like, I feel like it's gonna be, like, whenever I would look for music videos. I think it's better than that now. I think they've really substantially improved it, and I've heard a lot of people talk about how they have YouTube Premium specifically for YouTube music, because it's that good, and they've given up Spotify. How do you cope with the loss of Spotify Wrapped, then? Uh, uh, I listen to rock primarily. Those things on the ground? Well, while we wait for YouTube to potentially deceive our money, we're looking at Comcast. They've been accused of deceiving their customers. They have to rebrand their internet. They're not allowed to call it 10G anymore because they were accused by certain watchdogs of deceiving their customers by calling their 10 gigabit broadband 10G, which made people think that it was based on cellular technology, which is called 5G, that it was like, the doubling of what was out there. Additionally, part of the issue is that they have the Xfinity 10G network, which describes the network, but not everybody who's on the network can get 10 gigabit internet. So it's like you're on the 10G network, but you don't have access to the full amount. So it was a little confusing overall. Yeah. I, I mean, that was Comcast's response. They were like, we disagree, this is wrong. At the same time, it kind of like, I get it. it. It's misleading, but like 10G sounds fast. Yes. And 10 gigabit is also quite fast. <laughs> yeah, they could have just called it 10 gig and that maybe would have solved it. But then you do have the issue where you're on the 10 gig network, but you on, like you only have access to one gig when you look That's at That's the problem I have yeah. with this. It's, yeah. no, they're not allowed to do it anymore, so you don't have to have that All problem. All right, it's I fixed. won't worry about it. <laughs> All right, well, I don't think we have to worry about deals because Reese delivers them for us. Yo, welcome back to UFD Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals on the internet, and hey, deals. Starting off today, we have a UFD office favorite with the Thermaltake Tower 200 Mini ITX case, available in white for only $100.99, making $29 off. Then next up, we have this EVGA Supernova 1000G, which is their 1000 watt 80 plus gold fully modular power supply for only $124.99, making it $75 off. But then we also have the Scepter 32 inch 4K 70 hertz IPS mono for only $199.97, making it $50. Off. And then last but certainly not least, we're checking out something cool thanks to our friends and channel sponsors Jawa with this listing from Cade's PC. Featuring a Ryzen 5 3600, an RTX 3060 12 gig, 16 gigs of DDR4 running at 3000 megahertz and a 512 gig NVMe SSD. All fit in a summer Z4 mid tower case and powered by an EVGA 600 watt power supply. You can pick up this entire build for only $600, which is a phenomenal price considering how good this looks. And hey, don't forget if it's your first time buying from Jawa, you can use code UFD10 for $10 off your first purchase. Big extra thanks to our friends and channel sponsors Java for letting us take a look at this. And with that, the deals are done. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm going to hand you off back to Brett and Kyla for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Well, Reese Hulu thinks that you, you've been getting too good of a deal, okay? Because you, you lose <laughs> now because they're cracking down on password sharing. Just like Netflix and Disney Plus have in the past, they're not going to allow you to share your passwords with your friends and family. You all got to be on the same IP address as of March 14th. This year, Disney Plus did that? Disney Plus did do that. And now that Hulu and Disney Plus are fusing together to become one super app, it kind of has to happen. I've been using Family's Disney Plus it, you're always. Gonna, <laughs> you're going to face the Reaper sooner or later. I think they're just not as good at cracking down as Netflix is. Because Netflix, I remember when I was in South Africa, they cracked down hard on me using a VPN. They have some experience in making sure that the people that shouldn't be accessing things aren't know, accessing man. things. All I'm saying is Netflix works fine on my phone. <laughs> it doesn't work fine on my TV. But I can use it on my phone and log into my mom's Netflix. I have no problems. Well, people do have problems with using AI technologies in certain places. So like do I. With 
a monitor. We talked about this when we did our CES coverage. MSI announced an AI-powered monitor that detected enemies and let you know how to play the video game in League of Legends and gave you a health bar. And now Asus announces their own AI monitor. They're yeah. gonna have one as well. What's this one do? Uh, so it's not quite clear. It has the ROG gaming AI technology, which includes dynamic shadow boost, which is cool. Like using it for visuals, I get it. And dynamic crosshair, okay. So it gives color you temperature a... selection and game fast input. What is game fast input? It makes it fast game. It, what? So it's just low response time? Uh, potentially, but where's the uh, AI? I, I don't get it. I, d I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> this is very similar to one of their other monitors besides the AI technology. So when we talked to MSI about their AI monitor, they were like. We're probably never going to release this, like not in its current form. This is just a showcase. So it it kind of feels like maybe Asus is like, oh, man, we got to announce one now, too. But we don't have anything to really announce. So we can just call it AI. The crosshair is dynamic. It's AI. If the so I, I'd be interested in like a cross a dynamic crosshair if it like took like the, the bullet drop or like the oh yeah and it like adjusted to that but that's straight up cheating <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's interesting also like there there is not a single like certification board that will approve the use of the word ai in any given industry and like if you just think about it for half a second anything that uses a computer is technically artificial intelligence Mm -hmm. because it's artificially created. As long as the computer did the processing. Yeah, it's monitor GPT is what it means. I don't want it to. Man, 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 man. I want my GPT unmonitored. I want to, I want to use it by myself. Bring back Mongo Tom. Well, you might be able to do that with your new CPU. Just kidding. This has nothing to do with that. I was just trying to segue out of it. The 5700 X3D getting benchmarked. This is one of the CPUs that launched on January 31st. Turns out AMD didn't seed these to people. So we only got the APU reviews. And now we're getting small reviews of the 5700 X3D. You can go buy it right now. You can go to Amazon or Newegg and buy this chip. But there's not many benchmarks. But the good news is the benchmarks that are coming out about this $250 chip is that it's fast. It beats the 13600KF by about 25%, and it's probably very close to the 5800X3D. Unfortunately, this yeah. one review that's out <laughs> <laughs> does not compare it to the 5800X3D, but for $250, the amount of performance you're getting out of this thing is absurd. The fact that AMD continued to support AIM4 at this level at $250, like, this is a wild situation that we've never seen before. You could get the 7800X3D if you want like the best mm -hmm. bang for buck high-end gaming chip, or you, the 5700X3D makes a ton of sense for so many people. So, uh, but does it, how much does the 5800X3D cost right now? 315. 315, okay. So if you wanna, I would uh, yeah. personally wait and see like what other people say about it. The 5700X3D? Yeah, My be before I, I say 50 bucks, but... I hear you. I think AMD did a really good thing with the 5700X3D. It makes way more sense than the 5600X3D, which was a Micro Center exclusive. Mm -hmm. This is a good chip. I like it. I want to see it in more people's PCs. Need some dip for this chip. Yep, going up from a 2600X to that. Yeah. I can see a lot of people making that move. I would make move but you have a 5800X3D. Mm -hmm. That would be downward move. Yeah, stupid. Or up if I was upside down. It, Australian. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, I get it. And I get comments from you guys. So let's do comment response. We got randomness saying Kyler is the chaotic good kid that gets McDonald's after being sent home for defending himself from a bully. I like that band. Have I played their music for you? Good kid? Oh, I we have their mouse pad. I thought you yeah. still had the mouse pad over here. Yes. Know, somewhere. Okay. I like them. <laughs> then N Saber saying, poor Brett. Kyler is pure chaos. And then we got required. We got required username saying, using that six inch cooler screen as your primary monitor makes any desktop PC the world's most impractical all in one. That's smart. I didn't even think about that implication. What are we taught? Cooler screen? Your, that CPU cooler with the six inch oh, monitor yeah, on yeah, it? Yeah, the thing I was complaining about. <laughs> yeah, it's an all in one. Yeah. You don't need to buy yeah. a monitor. Yeah. <laughs> you put that on an APU, you can get a really small computer. And then you, your case, you just have it on like a test bench and it's all exposed and then it's on its side. 
or you you put it on lean it against the wall. Yeah. 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 Nostalgia Tech Lounge saying 9800X3D might be next year's undisputed gaming king. Shows how much we need competition to move the industry forward. You're making assumptions. Hmm. Bubba saying, happy to see Kyler having settled into his Chow's co-host role. He was trying too hard in the beginning, but now it's more natural and is all the more better for it. That was my nickname in high school. <laughs> Watch out, this guy's reckless. We got Deformation <laughs> saying, Kyler brought the hat back, even if it ain't a snapback. Trying to give Brett a heart attack. How about that? Wow. I went to college. Yep. Petrovsky <laughs> saying, a more... A foldable form. <gasps> that was a good joke. That's funny. That, that was really good. And then we have Dominic saying, I can't wait to experience six inches of cooling. And lastly, we got Ty Sky coming in saying, brainstorming ID here, not a demand. All right. How would the rest of the audience feel if on like Fridays, in addition to the regular hot news, they also upload an unedited version, like behind the scenes, and we really see all the chaos or have the uncut Fridays episode come out on Saturday. Do you want to take this? We used to stream the making of Hot News. We did. But Brett didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> also, it's not like the uncut video is that much better. Like, we're pretty... Not much is cut. Yeah, like, we, we're pretty tight on our filming. Like, there's not long moments in between what you see and then what is left on the floor. But if you do want to see like unadulterated chaos, we do stream all day, every day over on Twitch. Constantly. Like nonstop. You you can come just harass us while we're working. Mm -hmm. It's a thing. It's, uh, uh, I'm not condoning it, but we do it. Come on in. You can ban me you can from ban, the Twitch chat. You can do that. It's a fun situation. Uh, I think we should ban this episode. <laughs> See you on Monday. <laughs>